if I yell airplane, she like freaks out and looks at the sky ready. Airplane! Airplane! You see it? You see the airplane? In today's video, we're going to test out how Arctic animals stay warm. Hello, Cannon. Hi, Grace. How's it going? It's good. It's a wild day. You have some Crisco in Chicago. I have some Crisco here. Why do I have a bunch of Crisco and ice water? I'm a little afraid. You set up this experiment. What are we doing today? So we are going to be talking about how Arctic animals stay warm. I'm excited about this because Arctic animals use blubber to stay warm. It's actually half their body composition is fat. So I wanted to test today if we could create our own blubber by using saran wrap and giant things of Crisco to stay warm outside. It's actually snowing outside right now. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's coming down pretty heavily. So this is gonna be a true, true test. Here's the basic idea. We're going to use Crisco and Saran Wrap to reenact a blubber like Arctic animals have. Is that Crisco going to keep me warmer or am I just going to shiver to death? In Arctic animals, their blubber actually contains thick, oily layers of blubber. So blubber is critical to Arctic animals' survival. Not only does it a part of their anatomy, but it stores energy, it insulates the heat, and it increases their buoyancy when they're swimming in the super cold Arctic water. So the blubber holds a lot of proteins, which are mostly collagen, and a lot of lipids, which are fat. This is critical so that during the winter months they can hibernate and not have to come out and search for food as much. So those nutrients are a critical part of how they stay warm during the winter seasons because it gets incredibly cold up in Antarctica this time of year. Their winter times are intense. All right, Kenan, so I'm gonna have you try this at home first. I need you to get out your plastic bag. That one's gonna go on your hand. And then I need you to get another plastic bag, fill it with Crisco. And then you're gonna stick your hand in that and you're gonna stick it in these buckets of icy water. I don't like being your test dummy for this, but for the sake of science, I'm in. Okay, sounds good. At least you have the less messy version. I'm covering my whole body in lard today. <laughs> so when I was at the store, I chose to get Crisco because that's what you said you were using. But I saw that this is Crisco is vegetable fat, right? So it's a little bit different. I found some lard as well, which I think is derived from animal fat. I had no clue. Is there a reason that we chose Crisco over other types of fat? Yeah, so shortening is the closest thing to the consistency of blubber in animal animal fats and it is also safe. So considering I was going to be putting this all over my body, we wanted to use something that was gonna be a little bit safer and didn't have to harm animals in the making. That makes sense. I like and approve of that. Oh, oh no, oh, oh, oh. What does it feel like? It's like just grabbing a bunch of like butter slash like cream cheese. I don't know. It's slimy, but it's gonna get all underneath my nails. It's creamy and goopy and kind of fun. All right, so while Kenan was filling his bags with Crisco, uh, we were talking about the difference between saturated and unsaturated fats, and Kenan has a scientific bond explanation for you. Hit us with it, Kenan. The difference between the saturated and the unsaturated fats are the amount of hydrogens that they have in them. So the saturated fats are completely saturated. All of their extra bonds are filled with hydrogens, which allows them to remain as straight chains. Whereas the unsaturated fats, they lose a hydrogen and pick up a double bond instead. And this double bond allows the structure to kink. And this is why we have saturated fats, which are nice and structural, they can stay solid at room temps a lot easier than unsaturated fats, which are kinked out and willy-nilly, which are typically more liquids at room temps. Think like olive oil versus butter. Well, with that little bit of science out of the way, I have a bag full of Crisco and a very Crisco-y hand. What's my next step for this experiment at home for me? Your hand that is all Crisco-y is going in the Crisco bag and your hand that is not Crisco-y is going to go in just regular water, just regular okay. ice water. Put it in a bag also since you already have your other hand in Crisco in a bag also. So we need two bags, two hands, two things of frozen water. Uh, three, two, one. Oh, well, got a little bit of water leakage, but. All good. Oh no, there's cold water, it's right towards my feet. No, I'm leaking <laughs> up my counter. Oh my gosh, my left hand is so cold. This hand is freezing already, and my right hand hasn't changed at all. Oh my goodness, this hand's getting really cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even been 30 seconds. 
jacket. You don't know, it's so cold. It's cold here already. <laughs> I forgot. You don't I know my story, man! <laughs> you don't know my pain. This is crazy the difference that I can feel between these two though. My left hand is so unbearably cold. Is it really that different? It's huge difference. My right hand's just chilling. It's completely insulated. No temperature change at all. It could stay here all day. Wow, this is amazing. Oh my gosh, Grace, can I put my hands out now? You're good to go on that. You've already shown that it's surpassing and you're not freaking out either. That's something to point out. You are very much chilling with your hand in some lard. <laughs> I'm gonna go change clothes into something that's a little bit more lard appropriate and then we're gonna go do our control outside. I totally wanna see you suffer and freeze first because of what you just put me through. So I'll stick around for a little bit longer. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take my temperature before we head outside and then we're gonna use a stopwatch to see how long I last and then we'll take my temperature periodically outside to see if my body temperature drops, and then we'll do this again with lard all over me and see what happens. So I'm 97.7 right now. Let's test this out. Kenan, you only had to do this with your hand. Seems a little unfair, but uh, we did just have a snowfall. It was fantastic. It was lots of snow. We have a wild ray out here examining the snow. Are you giving us an uh, infield weather report right now? I am. There's a slight chance it's been snowing. It is now probably freezing rain as I can feel it coming down on me right now. But you know, that's how it is here in Utah. I'm sure it'll turn back over to snow. Back to you, Kenan, in the studio. Oh, thank you, Grace, thank you. It looks like it is absolutely chilling out there. And here at, not the TKOR studio, but my own house, I have finally managed to clean up three-fourths of the lard that you made me get everywhere. <laughs> Is my skin supposed to turn white? I feel like I should be turning like red. So you'll start turning red first because that, you'll turn red as more blood rushes to your skin. But as you're getting colder, your body actually wants to save the most important parts of it, which are gonna be your heart and lungs. So everything's gonna come in closer to your core and your extremities. That's why your fingers and toes are the first to get frostbit is because they're the most expendable in terms of things that you can lose. Something I want to point out that I am staying out here longer than Kenan did, not because <laughs> I'm a tougher human being, um, but purely because of the fact that um, I'm a larger heat source as a whole body and a human being rather than your hands like Kenan just explained with our extremities. So that makes sense. I'm now getting a low reading on the thermometer and it's been 15 minutes when I put it on my head which means I'm below like body temperature and a temperature that it can pick up. I think my, like even my hands, it reads low. I, my whole, maybe my legs. Okay, so my whole body has reached low. Like the thermometer cannot pick it up. Um, we'll have to figure out what low means on this temperature, what temperature that is below. Um, we're gonna head inside now, let me warm up. I'm losing mobility in my fingers. <laughs> because they can't like really curl um, and they're starting to burn. So before I get frostbite or it starts to like, bad things start happening to your body when you get super cold, we're gonna head inside because I have not a whole lot of fat on my body and uh, we need to fix that so I can stay warm out here. All right, let's go inside. Okay, I have warmed up, we're back inside. I'm gonna start saran wrapping myself. We're gonna do a layer and then we're gonna coat me in lard because I wanna minimize as much lard on my clothes as possible. And then we're gonna saran wrap that lard in place and see what happens. So we're gonna do this really, really fast in warp speed. <laughs> okay, so I'm all <laughs> saran wrapped, ready to go. We're doing a layer of saran wrap so it isn't so messy on my skin. That's one thing I learned from Kenan because he had the hardest time getting it off of himself. So I'm gonna go from here. We're gonna load on some lard and then call it a day. But I'm gonna put on some gloves first. Okay, so my mic is covered, but the lard suit is complete. It is not perfect by any means, but having this lard on, I'm already hot, and it's like taking the energy and like reflecting it back at my body, which is actually really cool. Okay, so I missed the lard on my butt, and that's the only thing that's cold right now. <laughs> I like missed some spot. <laughs> you look like a science experiment gone wrong. <laughs> But I am very warm. Like, I am incredibly warm. Last time I got out here, I was shivering. I could do all the activities out here. I mean, I could play like baseball. 
I could stand out here forever, be a scarecrow. <laughs> Get it. Oh wow, yeah, you are warm. <laughs> Now, how long did you last the last time that we were out here? Like 15 minutes? 15 minutes, but at this point I was like shivering. All right, so we're expecting you to stay out here for at least three times that, right? So you've got a solid 45? Yeah, for sure. But I don't think I need to stand out here for that long because I think I'm seeing some flaws in my lard experiment. I've got like holes where it's like disconnecting. So I think next time I do this, I'm definitely gonna make like a suit for myself and just put the lard in the suit and not use saran wrap. I kind of like this though. I saw a flaw as you were putting this together in your experimental design. And that the first time that you were out here, you didn't have saran wrap on you. So I was wondering if maybe the saran wrap would keep some of your heat in so that you would be warmer. But you're saying that even now with the lard and the saran wrap, the parts with the saran wrap without the lard, you are still feeling cold. Yeah, I'm really, really cold. Like there's parts that me that just have saran wrap that I can feel the air. That's awesome. That helps rule that out then so it really is the lard that's keeping you warm i feel like i could go be an arctic animal now and just like run around and be a polar bear there's always a possibility that it's so cold there that the lard starts to freeze and get cold and then makes her colder that's the other thing is like the weight on this this is like 60 pounds that i'm holding on my body right now 60 pounds of lard I mean, now you can understand though why animals like seals and walruses and polar bears are so heavy, right? Fat's not light. This was so interesting. Um, if there's anything you guys want to check out with lard and lard suits, we now know how to make them. We would love to check out the buoyancy and how well the lard actually keeps us all warm and comfy. So let us know in the comments below what you want to see. Hey guys, if you like this kind of content, make sure you check out our latest videos right there. And that way you never miss out on a new adventure. And we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then. <laughs>